Photoremediation Photoremediation involves utilizing plants to clean up chemicals in the soil, water, and air. And the estimated 350 plant species actually naturally take up um, toxic materials. For example, sunflower plants have been found to remove radioactive cesium and strontium at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine. Another example, water hyacinths uh, have been found to remove arsenic from water supplies in Bangladesh and India. So here's the process. Uh, so chemical pollutants, these little blue circles, uh, are absorbed through the roots and into the shoot of the plant uh, and into the plant cells where the plant cells degrade the pollutants directly. And then once the process is over, the plant can be removed and disposed. So what happens to the chemical pollutant? So after the toxic chemicals enter the plant, the plant cells might use enzymes to degrade the chemicals. Um, an enzyme is a special type of protein that can be used to speed up a chemical reaction. Uh, and you can kind of think of the plant as a sponge as it kind of absorbs all the chemical pollutants. Um, it's also important to note that high concentrations of chemicals kill most plants, so Phytoremediation works best when the amount of concentration is low. So here's a photo of phytoextraction, uh, which just refers to the extraction of the chemical pollutant. So the, here is a process of translocation where the chemical pollutant is taken up through the shoot of the root and into the plant tissue and the plant cells uh, where it's degraded. So in addition to the soil, scientists have also been exploring ways in which plants can clean up air pollution. Uh, so we know that plants naturally move carbon dioxide through photosynthesis. Um, and then we also know CO2 is a greenhouse gas, uh, a product of burning fossil fuels. Uh, and we burn a lot of carbon dioxide. Uh, fossil fuels come from um, oil, natural gas, uh, and coal, coal, which are... Uh, burned almost every day, every day, really. Um, and so the genome of uh, this plant, this tree called the black cottonwood um, has actually been sequenced. Uh, so they know the DNA patterns um, and they're able to genetically enter, engineer this poplar tree um, because they know that it has a promise. It shows potential in capturing high levels of carbon dioxide. Uh, so here's the black cottonwood poplar tree. Uh, so scientists have been able to genetically modify this tree to actually take in more carbon dioxide than it, uh, than, than uh, compared to a black cottonwood poplar tree that hasn't been genetically modified. Um, and then you know, given that we produce about 35 billion tons of carbon dioxide per year, um, this is a good uh, s s uh, step into the future. Uh, to try to clean up the environment, uh, especially air pollution. So there's some pros and cons of using federal remediation. Uh, the pros are it's effective, it's low cost, low maintenance, and it's an eye-appealing strategy. However, um, the cons are is that um, federal remediation can only be used about 50 centimeters deep, um, especially when you're when the contaminant is in the soil. Uh, because the roots roots don't really go that far down. And another con is that the cleanup typically takes several years.